Hi, this is Dr. Shannon Wong. I'm an ophthalmologist at Austin Eye. I'm going to demonstrate my usual technique for eye LASIK surgery using the IFS femtosecond laser made by AMO. Uh, we also use the Visix Star S4 eczema laser for the eczema ablation. Uh, the usual flap creation time is about 10 to 12 seconds. I use an 8.5 millimeter diameter flap with a temporal hinge the usual spot separation is 6 microns and the line separation is 7 microns. I find using a temporal hinge gives uh, better exposure uh, for the eczema ablation. While I do make the flap, I do not use a speculum of any sort. However, I do use a speculum course for the eczema ablation. I do pre-mark the cornea to assist in alignment of the flap after the ablation is complete. We use a Seibel flap lifter made by Rhine instrument company and my technique for lifting the flap made primarily here is to uh, separate the edge of the flap first with one end of this instrument and go all the way around from one edge of the hinge to the other edge and then I'll simply turn the instrument <coughs> to use the other side and then I will lift the flap using several passes. I'm careful to point the tip of the flap downward so as to avoid any inadvertent risk of um, perforating the flap in any way. The exposed area is dry. That's one distinct advantage over a microkeratome. We do not have to worry about hydration being brought underneath the flap by the microkeratome pass. If there's any wicking of uh, tear fluid onto the edge of the flap, I just gently absorb it with a microfiber sponge. We engage the iris registration of the Visix laser. This patient had about a 55 to 59 second ablation time. She was a minus 9 myopic person with astigmatism. I used to make larger flaps uh, nine millimeters. I, for several years, have just used the 8.5 millimeter flap diameter and it seems to work very well. All my flaps are 100 microns in thickness. I've had essentially zero complications using that flap thickness specification. This is a custom ablation using the physics. Once the ablation is completed, I simply use a uh, syringe with a blunt cannula to float the flap back down using BSS. I do wash underneath the flap to remove any debris that may have become inherent to the undersurface of the flap. I'll then direct my attention at the gutters of the flap to make sure they're adequately realigned and then I'll realign the marks of the 
optical zone marker that was placed at the nasal part of the flap. This again is a temporal hinge and I pre-marked the nasal aspect of the flap before I lifted it. And I'll re-approximate those marks. So by sweeping with a cannula on the top surface of the flap, I have realigned the ink marks and then I'll use a Johnston flap applinator, again made by Ryan Instruments, to massage and essentially squeegee this flap so it's nice and smooth and well positioned. This is an IFS flap where the edge architecture of the flap is about 120 degrees and it's supposed to create a very strong flap adhesion. So the flap is biomechanically stronger than it would be if we had a flap edge angle that was less than 90 degrees. That concludes the procedure. Thank you for your time and attention.